Soon after Russia's army pushed in to try to seize control of Ukraine, Maria Zaharva, the bellicose foreign ministry spokeswoman in Moscow, insisted that her country still had plenty of friends in the world. She mostly meant China, but others too. Look at the reaction of world giants, those who are not seeking to present themselves as giants, but who really are giants, Zaharova said in a primetime state television interview on February 28, four days after Russian troops commenced a bloody onslaught ta. Zaharova and her Kremlin associates have spun plenty of false conspiracy theories to justify Russian President Vladimir Putin's unprovoked attack on a sovereign neighbor. But she was not wrong to suggest that much of the world, at least as measured by population, is unwilling to fully spurn Russia in response to the war in Ukraine. The United States and its European allies with the backing of close partners such as Canada, Australia, Japan, and South Korea, have imposed harsh sanctions on Russia. Those measures are pummeling the Russian economy, crashing the ruble and driving some of the world's best-known brands to exit the country. But not everyone is on board with imposing full-on pariah status on Putin. Beyond this fortified coalition, very few nations have chosen to take part in the economic warfare set against the Putin government, David Adler, General Coordinator of Progressive International, a group that promotes left. He likened the grouping of countries that want to chart their own course regarding Russia to the non-aligned movement that sprang up in the post-colonial 1950s, eschewing allegiance with any major power bloc. In referring to world giants that have chosen to not fully repudiate the Russian leader, Zaharova was principally referring to China, which the Biden administration is trying to dissuade from giving wartime aid to Moscow.